what service, please? Yeah, serious accident, River Road, underneath the freeway. Panel van, two occupants, one deceased, one severely injured. Can I have your name, sir? You have the information, act on it. Sorry, I missed your call. I need to see you. About the results of your pap smear? My pap smear? Can you come in? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all right, isn't it? We can talk about it when you come in. Well, I'm on my way out to the remand centre. I don't have my diary. I have a space at 4.30 today. <sighs> yeah, I can make that, sure. Good. I'll see you then. Bye. Good morning, Mr. Downs. Please have a seat. I'm Dr. Jane Halifax. I've been asked by the court to prepare a psychiatric assessment for the next bail hearing. Assuming I have no objection. Well, do you have an objection? It was a shrink got me shunted out of the service. You blame him personally? <laughs> Who said it was a him? Dr. Andrews, his report's in the file. Well, you know all about me. Game. Set match. I'd prefer you not to smoke, actually. So, what is it that I know about you? I'm an ex-cop and I'm crazy. Well, I haven't read it yet. I'd prefer to form some impressions of my own first. What I do know is that, yes, you are an ex-cop and you're facing a list of serious charges, including manslaughter and assuming the designation of a police officer. So, shall we get on with this? Let's talk about what happened that night. How did you see the events? I observed the panel van being driven erratically. I followed, used the police blue light in an attempt to pull it over. The driver tried to outrun me and crashed. The driver being a 15-year-old girl? That's right, Doctor. She and a friend stole the van, took it for a test drive. Now she's dead and the friend's in hospital with a broken back. Is this what you want to know? Well, that's a starting point. So, were you upset by what happened to the two girls? Upset's kind of a pissy little word for it, wouldn't you say? So why don't you tell me how you felt? I haven't had many worse moments than that one. But if I've learned anything in this life, it's that you can't change something once it's happened. You learn that, you can get by. Yeah, but you can grieve over it. There's such a thing as legitimate grief. Some emotions, or degrees of emotion, fall within a normal yeah, pattern yeah. of behaviour. Bottom line is, those kids saw a police car and they ran. So? Police in those situations aren't charged with manslaughter. But you're not police, are you? So, you kept the blue light after you retired? 
Yeah, that's right. For a reason? Maybe you still wanted to feel like a police officer. Maybe I just thought of it as a souvenir. What about the gun? A witness says you were carrying a gun when you went to the crashed van. Is that a souvenir too? You're really just a stooge, aren't you? Meaning? Meaning just another cop shrink sent to do the police dirty work for them. Well, I'm actually not working for the police. I'm working for the court. <laughs> and there's a difference? Look, Mr Downs, I think you need to ask yourself the question. Do you really want to get out of here? Well, room service is real slow and you just can't get drafty. People can have their reasons for wanting to stay inside. And you think I want to stay inside? I asked you the question. Well, then I really would be crazy, wouldn't I? Were you just talking to Laurie Downs? Uh, yes, I was. I'm his daughter, Suzanne. Oh, hi, Jane, Halifax. Do you know what's going on? Because I certainly don't. Oh, uh, why don't we go over here? They all thought he was a hero once. They even pinned a bloody medal on him. Oh, what for? The siege got out of hand and Dad took a bullet in the back. They gave him a medal and they turned around and threw him out like garbage. Sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. It's OK. It's like... Everything's closing in. I can't sleep. I'm driving Scott mad. It's my husband. He's a cop too. How do they get on? They have their moments. We've been living with Dad. We were saving for a house. Oh, mounting a defence can be expensive. He's got no one else. Got no other family. Mum walked out when things got tough. When was that? Eighteen months ago. Six months after that, he was kicked out of the service. Cops are saying he acted like some kind of crazy vigilante the other night, but I know there had to be some sense in it. I hate seeing him in there. I've got to get him out of that place. Well, he has to help himself, too. He won't, will he? Not so far, no. Jane. Thought you were going to cancel on me again. Oh, I got stuck in traffic. How have you been? Fine. We missed you at the gallery opening the other night. Yeah, I uh, had to wash my hair that night. <laughs> Professor Stevens was asking after you. Oh, really? How's his wife and kids? <laughs> Let's talk about your pap smear results. Well, I didn't think you'd brought me here to talk about my would-be boyfriends. Abnormal cells have shown up. What sort of abnormal cells? Severe dysplasia. I want you to go and see David King as soon as possible. He's the best gynecologist I know, and I'm sure he's available. Uh, I can't right now. I've just taken on a... Like you couldn't make time last year to have your pap smear, or the year before that? I could go on. Well, let's not go over that again. No. Let's. You have a family history of cervical cancer, Jane, and if you'd had this pap smear when you should have done, things might not have come to this. Come to what? Abnormal cells doesn't mean cancer. No. But they do need investigation, not just more avoidance. So what's the problem, Laurie? Hey, you're missing the job, mate. Feeling a bit nostalgic, were you? You thought you'd uh, take the old blue light out for a burn. Panel van went through a red light. There was a danger to other vehicles on the road. Wasn't the only one, So, what did you intend to do? I don't know. Stop them, give them a warning. Right. Give them a bit of a, a fright, if you like. Is that why you had the gun? I wasn't carrying a gun. You got a witness, mate? He had his eyesight tested. <laughs> his word against yours. Have you found a gun, Detective Senior Sergeant? So, you're going to give these, um, these two young girls a fright? How? Threaten to throw them in jail if they didn't give you sexual favours. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, then what, Laurie? I didn't even know there were girls in the van, right? Couldn't see inside, had tinted windows, could have been a mob of footballers for all I knew. So who did you think you were following? A speeding car. Bullshit! Suit yourself. Hmm. 
I didn't even know there were girls in the van. Huh? Had tinted windows. I couldn't see inside. Could have been a mob of footballers for all I know. So who did you think you were following? A speeding car. Bullshit! Suit yourself. Hi. Hi. On your way Thanks. through. Well, I watched the tapes of evidence, read Dr. Andrews' report. So am I crazy or what? Well, crazy covers a multitude of sins. We're all a bit crazy about some things. He said as a police officer you'd become obsessive. Oh, most good cops I know are obsessive. Would that be your experience? To some degree, yeah. But not to the point where they can't go on. Now, his report also refers to you being abusive and violent towards prisoners on several occasions. It was alleged, I was. And that you were becoming increasingly paranoid, and all in all, your future in the service wasn't bright. Hey, look. I was working too hard, I was drinking too hard, my marriage fell apart, I fell apart. And yes, I behaved erratically. That doesn't make me insane. And what about now? I guess that's up to you. Detective Murray said there were other times that you posed as a police officer. Why? People think you're a cop, you get their attention. Is that what you were looking for, attention? No. Old habits just die hard, I guess. So you did still think you were a police officer? <laughs> this is the one, isn't it? I say, yeah, I flipped. I thought I was still a cop. But then you have to say I'm not safe to be let out in case I flip again. Why don't you just take the chance and tell me the truth? Did I think I was still a cop? I was in the service 30 years. I'm a cop in here. That doesn't stop just because I get the ass. Your Worship, my report was prepared on the basis of two meetings with the accused at the remand centre. Now, this was not sufficient time to reach any hard and fast conclusions. There could well be a significant depressive disorder, and I could not exclude personality disorder on such a relatively brief assessment. But I found no evidence of psychosis. So put in simple terms, Dr Halifax. I found no evidence for any mental disorder that, of itself, would be likely to make the accused a danger to the community. Your Worship, Dr Andrews notes in his report that he found evidence of severe personality disorder with paranoid tendencies as well as disturbed behaviour. Well, that report was prepared nearly two years ago. I think there's reason to believe that circumstances have changed. Mr Downs has been accused of a very serious crime. If he is released on bail, don't you think it is possible that he may reoffend? No, I think it's unlikely. Oh, well then perhaps he may commit another crime. Objection, Your Worship. The matter of bail for the accused should be considered in relation to the particular counts on which he's being charged here. It's impossible to speculate on what he or any of us might or might not do in other matters, given the opportunity. Objection sustained. Dr Halifax, Dr Andrews' report refers to incidents of violent behaviour during Mr Downs' work as a detective. There are also on police record two occasions when men charged with crimes had to be released because Mr Downs had either threatened or assaulted them. Well, those incidents happened before Mr Downs left the police service. So, you're saying, are you, Dr Halifax, that you see no grounds for refusing bail? No medical or psychological grounds, yes, I am. have such a way with words. <laughs> Didn't you want to be a journalist once? Oh, I decided I was too ethical. So you became a lawyer. Hmm. <laughs> hey, listen, what did you think of my client? What I said in court? No, I mean as a person, a man. I think there's a lot he's not telling us. Hmm. Kind of attractive, though, isn't he? Something of the old style, the man about him. 
Not enough of them around these days. Not enough men full stop. Oh, God, don't get me started. No, let's get started. You got time for a drink? Yeah. So, how are you? Have you been? Fine. Jeez, that was convincing. <laughs> no, really, I'm fine. What about you? Well, my mother's ageing. I think she could have a touch of Alzheimer's. Oh. My cat died. I oh. decided my boyfriend's an asshole. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr Halifax. What's your problem, Detective? It took us hundreds of man hours to catch Laurie Downs and it took you just five minutes to oh. get him let out. The magistrate let him out, Brett. Yes, based on inconclusive psychobabble. Oh. And where did you get your psychiatric oh, I'm not prepared to debate this with you in the street. Well, then perhaps you should go and see those kids' parents and explain to them your reasoning. Eric Upton? Yeah, that's right, mate. Detective Senior Sergeant Murray, what can I do for you? Well, came in to get me toolbox. Spoke to someone on the phone. I'm the owner of the panel there and them Sheila's stole. Just my bloody luck. Yeah. Can you get the toolbox for us, please? I'd say their luck was kind of worse than yours. Just, your tools are in the back of the van and, and I need them for work. I've been waiting to get them for weeks. I need a signature. It's a bit of a bummer all around, eh? in place so I need uh, foreman and two cars straight away. Uh, let's go pay an old mate a visit. What's going on? Your father-in-law here, is he? He's in bed. Why? Wake him up. I need to speak to him. You can't just barge in here like this. Laundry through here, is it? Yeah. Any washing done last night? Any backyard burning? Not that I know of. Senior, can you check the laundry, please? Constable, the bathroom. Thank you. What time did you go to bed last night? About 10.30. You too? I think so. Did your father leave the house at all last night? No. I would have heard him. The floorboards creak. Every time your father gets up in the night to take a piss, the floorboards creak and you wake up, do you? Did you notice anything unusual in his manner last night? No. What's going on? You and I are going down to the station. I want to have a little chat. About what? The death of Eric Upton. Susie, call my lawyer. Tell her to meet me at the police station. I'll get my coat. Listen, mate. I understand your wife being a bit reticent when it comes to her dad, but you are a serving police officer. For your sake and hers, I suggest you remember that. Nothing to worry about.
Can you account for your movements last night? Some of them. Where were you at 6pm? Driving around listening to the news. Driving around? I often like to give my daughter and her husband a bit of time on their own, you know. You remember what the news was about? Some of it. It all runs together after a while. Something about police harassment? At 6pm yesterday evening, the last time the deceased was seen alive, you were driving around listening to the news. That's right. Did you know or have you ever met the deceased Eric Upton? No. Do you realise Eric Upton was the owner of the car you chased, which ended in a fatal accident? Your words, Detective. I ask you again, did you know Eric Upton? No. Last night, while driving around listening to the news, were you in the vicinity of Elliott Street, St Kilda? No, I was not. I put it to you, Mr Downs, that you are lying, that you did know Eric Upton, and that at approximately 6.15pm yesterday evening, you attacked the deceased... I deny that. You attacked the deceased at his place of residence and beat him to death with a cricket bat. Cricket's not my sport, mate. As to why you wanted to kill Eric Upton, I'm yet to discover. Do you have to listen to any more of this? Detective Senior Sergeant, do you intend to charge my client or not? Interview ended 17.20. We need to review our evidence. You have nothing to place me at the scene of the crime whenever that happened. It's not because your evidence is shit, but because it wasn't there. That's enough, Mr Downs. You're a bloody disgrace. Oh, that's just great coming from you, pal. Thank you. Well, I don't believe it. Where is he now? Well, he's gone home. Thank you. Brett didn't have anything to charge him with. Well, what do you think? Well, I can only go on what Laurie tells me. He says he didn't do it. Forensics haven't turned up anything that puts him at the crime scene. Well, did he know this guy, Eric Upton? Oh, he says he didn't. Yeah, but it was Upton's car he was following when it crashed. Hey, look, I know it seems coincidental, but there's a big difference between misusing police equipment and killing someone. Brett's got a blowfly up his ass. Laurie's made the coppers look like fools, and he's pissed off. So what are you going to do? Well, I want you to do a fresh psychiatric assessment. Or well, shouldn't that wait to see if he's charged? Well, we'll need it anyway when the first case gets to court. Besides, I thought you'd be glad of the chance to test your own conclusions. What conclusions? What you told the bail magistrate. You can skip the sales pitch, Emma. But you'll do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Hi. Suzanne said I'd find you here. I used to come here as a kid and watch the trains. Have you always lived around here? Pretty much, yeah. Parents owned a place over there. Went to school here, married here, divorced here. I was wondering about that, actually. About what? The divorce. Is that when things started to go wrong? Not really, no. Oh, I didn't help. We got married young, had Susie. Got along well most of the time, but we ran into a few problems. There wasn't enough left in it to get through. How about you? You ever been married? No. What? They couldn't rope you? <laughs> well, you're married to your job. But you should have kids. Something I think about. We well, don't think too long. Without my daughter and grandson. I don't know. You know, I've been retained by the defence this time to do an assessment. Because you did such a good job last time. Did I? It bothers you, doesn't it? You think I conned you? In what sense? Into helping me get bail. I can set your mind at rest about one thing. What's that? I didn't murder Eric Upton. A lot of people have looked me in the face and said they didn't do something. It was later proof they did. Other times Laurie's alleged to have posed as a police officer. Uh, there's no alleged about it, Doctor. Why do you think he does it? Well, it's not hard. 
You get up every morning for 20 years, strap on a gun, it makes you a different person. Meaning you have a sense of power, being in control. Mm. Plenty of guys miss that when they leave the service. I'm curious about an incident involving the railways. He flashed some fake ID and got himself into one of their computers. Would have got away with it, but uh, somebody rang up here with more info for him and the alarm bells went off. Did he tell you what he was doing there? We don't get much out of lorry downs, Doctor. You must have noticed that. I'd like to look at the crime scene where Upton was murdered. In the file, Eric Upton had a bit of a murky past. He uh, beat up his girlfriend pretty badly. Did ten months for it. He only got out three weeks ago. Seems he was safer inside. So, when, uh, when Upton got home, the, uh, the murderer was already inside the room. He picked the lock. He found a cricket bat belonging to Upton, and he was probably hiding behind the door. Upton came in and got hit from behind. Down on the bed. Upton gets up, the murderer hits him again, and then hits him again. The thing about the guy with the cricket bat, he was really enjoying himself. A bit like you are. What makes you think that? He allowed Upton to crawl. Upton crawls out, and this is where he finished him off, just as Upton was thinking he was going to escape. I don't get it. What is the connection between Laurie and Upton? Good question. Well, if you're so sure it's Laurie, why haven't you charged him? I don't want Laurie Downs walking away because a jury got seduced by a nicely packaged and presented defence report. Do you really have as much contempt for juries as that sounds, Detective? Or is it just for what I do? Yeah, that's great, Ma, but I haven't seen Jenna for a million years. I mean, do you think it's going to be a bit odd, me just showing up at her baby shower? Yeah, yeah, I know she's a cousin, but... Of course I'll send her something. Yes, all right. OK. Fine, thanks, bye. How's your mother? Oh, great. Nagging me to go all the way to Flaming Adelaide to celebrate the birth of a baby, whose mother I can't stand. Oh, the joys of families. I know Jenna is seven years younger than me. I always thought I'd have babies before her. It's tragic. So you're smarter than her. Mm. Jane, an abnormal smear is not such a big thing. I've had lots of friends who've tested abnormal. Yes, but have they got a family history? Have they avoided having a smear for the last five years? Yeah, well, that's stupid and you should know better. Pap smear. Named after Dr. Pap. A man, naturally. Smear. Excuse me? You finished? <laughs> Stuff it, I'll start the health kick tomorrow. Oh, no, that's the Jane I know and love. I see here that there's a history of cervical cancer on your father's side. Yes, uh, both my grandmother and aunt died from it. I know I've already had the lecture from Francis. It's true. We doctors make the worst patients. Yeah. So you're going to do a colposcopy? Yes, that's a start. Then we'll see what we're dealing with. Given that it's a high-grade abnormality, will I need a hysterectomy? Well, it's possible, but unlikely. The colposcopy will let us know the next step. Well, I suppose I should be grateful. All this time, I thought my father didn't leave me anything. Anna will show you where the gowns are kept. Take much more of this. Hey. Maybe you should go away for a bit, you and Joel. You go to Gippsland and stay with your friend. What's her name? I can't go away and leave Dad in this shit. I'll be here. I can't go and leave him, Scott. Okay. How can okay. I? Okay. What's she doing here? Who? Jane Halifax. I'm gonna go. What if she wants to talk to you? I can't be late. They're all looking at me sideways as it is. Oh, because of Dad. I think they've all got really short memories, including you. Something is going on with him that we don't know about. And that makes him a murderer. I didn't say that. But was he home all night the night that guy was killed? Do you know for sure? Because I tell you what, 
I couldn't swear to it on the Bible. No one's asked you to. No, but if this goes to court, they will. And what are you going to say then? You let her in. Hey, baby. Hello. <laughs> you want to go and find Dad's helmet? With the sessions we've had, your dad talks a lot about things on the surface of his life, but nothing much underneath. Are most coppers like that? How much can you get out of them? Scott included. True, but I've been looking at his file. I mean, I see a guy with a great track record, friends at work, and then almost overnight things go wrong. Was there any trauma apart from the marriage split around the time of his breakdown? Not that he told us about. Well, it's just that usually there's some trigger, that's all. You mean like a siege or a bus accident? No, it can be quite small. <sighs> he just said work got on top of him. What I don't understand is why he didn't get better once he got out of there. He still got really moody and depressed. And what did he do when he was like that? Go out and drive around, usually. Sometimes he stayed out all night. Does he still do that? Are you thinking of the guy that was murdered because he slept at home that night? But he does still drive around. Sometimes. What about his temper? Does he ever get really angry, go into a rage? Sometimes, but sane people do that too. Look, he'd never lie and wait for someone and beat them to death the way they're saying. He'd never have done that. People think Dad's tough, but I know for a fact he's going through hell over those two girls. started to go wrong. He might know something I don't. Yeah, Mick McGuinness. I've been trying to contact him. He's not returning my calls. Because they're all closed mouth bastards. I don't get much out of any of them. Dad, what's wrong? Nothing. I'll leave you two to talk. We do this some other time. Um, yeah, all right. Tomorrow morning, my office, nine o'clock. I'll see. No, Laurie, not I'll see. I meant to be your ally here. My paid ally. Yeah, one who's going to walk away without pay if you keep avoiding me. You're not prepared to trust anyone much, are you? I trust my daughter and grandson. You go anywhere near that kid or that hospital again and I will shoot you like the mad dog that you are and they will probably pin a bloody medal on me for it. What's he talking about? You ask him. Stay away from her! You went to the hospital, why? Dad, what's going on? Laurie. Laurie. Laurie! <laughs> Not now, all right? What, do you think I'm doing this for my own entertainment? You are risking spending the rest of your active life in jail. I won't be doing jail. And if you won't consider what it's doing to yourself, try thinking about what you're doing to your daughter and your grandson. All right. 9 a.m. your office tomorrow.
of things at home, Scott. I imagine that uh, it could get a bit tense living with your wife's dad. I'd appreciate anything you could give me on him, mate. Such as? Well, whatever seems relevant as and when things crop up. You want me to dive him in? No, I want you to keep me in touch. Well, my wife wouldn't be too happy about that. Your wife doesn't need to know, does she, mate? You are a servant police officer, Scott. That means you do what you have to do. Your family does not come into it. He was a good cop once. So they all say. You know he was just up at the hospital hassling that poor bloody girl. The kid may never walk again and he's hassling her. You think about that. You've got to take a side in this one, Scott. But don't take the wrong side, mate, because it will count against you. And that's not good for your wife and kid, is it? That's my mobile number. I'll be expecting a call. probably answer that better than me. The colposcopy has shown abnormal cells extending into the cervical canal. Now, I'd like to do a cone biopsy. That way I can see how advanced the problem is. So far, there are no obvious signs of cancer. Is there no alternative? Given the findings, I wouldn't like to do anything less. It'll give us a diagnosis, and hopefully the biopsy will be the only treatment you'll need. But we're talking cancer, aren't we? One step at a time. And when Suzanne was born, everything changed. If you know what I mean. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, thinking about something else, the, the girl at the hospital. I can do that. Do what? Talk my way out of trouble. <laughs> you mean lie your way out of trouble? You've been a policeman all your life. You don't talk, you interrogate. Meaning? Meaning you don't answer questions either. You go on the defensive. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm not the one who was thinking of something else. So why did you go and see the girl at the hospital? I told you. To see if she was all right. That's a meaningless statement, Laurie. It doesn't tell me anything. Now, look, we can, we can play games and talk around the truth all you like, but if you expect me to write down anything more penetrating in my appraisal, then he still loves playing a copper. I went to see if I could help her, to say I was sorry. And what happened? Well, she was asleep. I was going to put some money in the drawer beside her bed. That's all I could think of. But she woke up. When ape shit started screaming. Well, I'm not surprised. I expect you really freaked her out. You might say that, yeah. So why don't you tell the police that? The police? I don't know. 
Once again, you get the chance to explain things and you just clam up. Why do you do that, do you think? Because having been a cop, you know the tricks they play? No. Because you've got something to hide? Maybe. Because you're guilty? No. Okay, so what are you hiding? It's irrelevant. Irrelevant to what? To this case. Laurie, we're not here to talk about a case. We're here to talk about you. Okay, so what have we got? It's a bit of a tragic story, really. But a very good cop who was travelling nicely. Even gets a medal. And then something happened. And in a few short months, he starts to run amok. His marriage breaks up. He, uh, he starts intimidating witnesses, beating up suspects. Gets investigated by internal affairs and booted off the force. What happened, Laurie? It's not relevant to any of this. Were you being blackmailed? No, why? Well, if it's a pattern of anger, frustration, stress, why you won't reveal any details. I read too much. It's something to do with the railways. You pose as a police officer to access the railway's computer? Yeah. Why? A mate had a consignment go astray. The police weren't interested. I wanted to help him out. Lying your way out of trouble again. I can pick one at 50 paces. Who are you protecting? No one. Well, it's certainly not yourself. Yes, Ruth. Well, when does she call? Yeah, thanks. My secretary just took a call from Emma. It seems you're wanted down at police headquarters for a lineup. You okay to take a look? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. So what's happened? A woman thinks she saw a man outside Upton's place early on the night he was murdered. They'd been in there for ages. Do you recognise anyone? I can't be sure. Your client can go at this stage, but I'll be calling him back for more questioning. Great, can I have a moment? Thanks. Ready to eat? Is he here? Yeah, he's with Joe, why? Hasn't he told you? Told me what? About the lineup. Still my house, Scott. Talk about me, you do it to my face, all right? Tell me what happened, Dad. Detective Murray said that a woman placed him at uh, Upton's house the night he was murdered. Is this true, Dad? Shut it, Scott. This has nothing to do with you. Oh, is that right? My career is going down the toilet because of you, or don't you give a shit? Where were you, Dad? Where did she see you? She saw me nowhere. Can we just have dinner? <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry. That's right. This is dinner. We don't talk about messy things like beating someone to death with a cricket bat. Shut up! <laughs> Seen that side to your old man before, have you?
Mick McGuinness? I'm sorry, I'm late for court. I'm Jane Halifax. I know who you are. You haven't returned any of my calls. That's because I've got nothing to say. You were Laurie's partner for six years. You must know him better than most. The last time Laurie spoke to a shrink, it got him kicked out of the service. Well, I know it was a damning report, but we don't just make things up about our patients. Look, Laurie had a few things go bad for him, and it got on top of him. It happens to all of us. You're talking about his marriage breakup? Yeah. What else? Isn't that enough? You said a few things. Figure of speech. Police have a witness that saw someone outside Upton's place the night he was murdered. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Thanks for your time. I knew him when I was starting out. Back then, I thought the sun shone out of his ass. He was exactly the kind of detective I thought I'd want to be. Which was? Oh, tough, smart, in control. He was a bit of a dinosaur in his way, but... He could always see the human side of things, you know, the, the bigger picture. Nothing like he is now. Suzanne won't hear a word against him. She was really angry with her mother for walking out on him. Yeah, well, she blames her mum for the breakup. Yeah. But if you ask me, Amy had every right. Every right to leave? Why? Is there another woman? I don't know. I can ask Suzanne. No, don't. She doesn't know about it. But you do. Look, I don't see what this has got to do with anything. Oh, Scott, I'm trying to help Laurie. I saw them together. Where? I was on patrol. I saw them getting out of a car. It was his car. What, and you assumed they were having an affair? It was deadly obvious. Who was she? I don't know. I never fronted him on it. Is it still going on? No, it ended. I don't know how, but it did a while ago. Why around the time that Laurie was having the breakdown? I don't know. Look, that's all I can tell you, OK? Tell me about the affair. What do you know about that? You had an affair. Tell me about it. Who told you? It doesn't matter how I know. Was it the affair that started all this? Just leave it. That's obviously important. You don't know what you're talking about. No, I don't. So why don't you tell me about it? This has nothing to do with you, and it's nothing you can put in your bloody report. Just leave it. Been long enough. What's wrong? Who says there's anything wrong? I'm a cop. I notice things about people. You were a cop. Yeah, okay, I was a cop. I still notice things. What's wrong? I've got to go into hospital tomorrow for a small surgical procedure. And you're scared? They keep telling me not to be. But you're scared just the same. Well, maybe I should listen to them. I'm a doctor too. Who trusts doctors? Let alone shrinks. Exactly. I'm sorry. Would you like a 
Coffee, sir. Yeah, long black, thanks. Sugar's on the table. Thank you. So, what are you doing here? Her name was Margaret. You wanted to know about the woman I had an affair with. Her name was Margaret. Were you in love with her? Were you? You sound very sure. If I'm sure of anything, I'm sure of that. I loved her. I wasn't looking to get into an affair then, neither was she. It took us both by surprise. I'd never felt anything quite like that before. Like a bloody great river in flood just sweeping you away. You ever felt that? So did that, that break up your marriage? Amy never knew about it. There's something I could show you that might answer a whole lot of questions that you've been asking me. What is it? I'd really need to take you there. When? Now. Go in my car. Uh, I... One hour, tops. the station, just on her way home from work, when two men grabbed her, dragged her into a park by the railway, and raped her. She was their third victim. Mark was pretty gutsy, you know, she uh, managed to get away from him, she ran out onto the road, in front of a truck, and he couldn't stop in time. She got a few words out about what had happened, and then she died. I'm sorry. Who else knows about this? Who could I tell? Were the two men ever caught? No, the police thought that Margaret's death had scared them off. But you thought differently? Yeah. When I left the force, slung out of the force, had a lot of time on my hands. I just used to drive. Drive all over the place. I'd stopped in at a cafe just outside of a country town flicking through the local newspaper and there was an article about a woman raped near the station. Two men. So you thought they were active again? Yeah. I went back through every local newspaper, country, suburban, all over the state. Found another six rapes, same MO. All at railway stations? Yeah, the women were always coming home from work. The only change happened about ten months ago when the attack started being committed by one man. There was a rape near a station a couple of nights back. So why didn't the police make the same connection? Well, the attacks are widely separated. I mean, rape's usually a more local thing. So why didn't you offer them the information you had? I'm crazy, remember? They trust me about as far as you can spit a rat. And you were too pissed off with them as well. Is that why you set up this place? Yeah. I had a hunch that these maggots might just be railway men seem to fit. They, they seem to know the layouts of all the stations. They could move around the state easily. 
So I went to the railways, posed as a cop, got into the central personnel files and started to match the locations of the rapes against the movements of the staff. And come up with a name. Eric Upton. Yeah. He was a carpenter. Moved all over the state, fixing stations, whatever. I tracked him down and found he was doing 10 months jail. For an assault on his girlfriend, I guess. So, then did you wait for him to get out of jail? Yeah. I know what you'd be thinking, Jane. Is he about to confess to a murder? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't kill him. Someone else had that pleasure. What about the woman who thought she recognised you at the lineup? She was right. I was there, followed him home. But I didn't get out of the car. But if you didn't kill him, who did? Upton was a mongrel lowlife. He'd have made a lot of enemies in his time. And what about the other guy? You're still looking for him, aren't you? Well, what are you going to do if you find him? Kill him? Hours up. Laurie, look. If I think you're about to do serious harm to another human being, no matter how appalling I think that human being is, then it's up to me to try and stop it. And how would you do that? Go to Murray? Lay it all out for him, give him the missing link, connection between me and Upton. What do you think he'd make that story? You'd be handing him my head on a plate. You know I can't do that. The information you've given me is privilege. But if you prepare a proper statement... Oh, come on! Look, Murray's pretty bright, really, in spite of the way he goes on. If he knew all the information, he... What? You ask me to bet the rest of my life on which way that clown jumps? I don't think so. Then why tell me all this? Why show me the story? You're the shrink. You work it out. I'm Robin. Your room's just here. Right. You'll need to take everything off and put the gown on. You can pop the things in the locker. Do you have any valuables with you? Um. Right. Uh, I'll need to take those rings, though, so they don't fall off in theatre. Well, they'll be ready for you soon. What are you going to do if you find him? Kill him? Oh, shit. Excuse me, I've, uh, I've just got to make a phone call. You can't use a mobile in here. It affects the equipment. Uh, fine, I'll find a payphone. Well, they're, they're on the way up for you now. I'll be as quick as I can. I can't get there this afternoon. Yeah. Look, yeah, yeah, look, I've got to go. Okay, bye. Urgent. I've worked out who killed Eric Upton. Yeah, who? You said there were two rapists. The second rapist must have seen the car accident on the news, realised the police were onto Upton, and that's why he killed him. Well done. Uh, look, Laurie, I've got to go. Please don't do anything stupid. Promise me you're not going to go looking for this other guy. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to call back. You're right, Jane. Well, look, you can't talk, neither can I. You concentrate on your operation, OK? I'll see you. Laurie! Look, I'll be, I'll be two minutes, OK? Please. Police headquarters. Homicide, thanks. Who's calling, please? Yeah, it's Jane Halifax for Detective Murray. Yeah, I'll put you through. You've reached Brett, the voicemail look. of Detective Senior Sergeant Brett Murray. Uh, I'm afraid I can't take your call at the moment, but if you'd like to leave a message... One more call. It's more than my job's worth. You're late. Sorry. You get the information? Yeah. Listen, mate, I'm worried. What's up? 
Had a visit from your shrink the other day. What did you tell her? Nothing. But she reckons Murray's trying to pin the Upton murder on you. Listen, I didn't do it if that's what you're worried about. What are you doing, Laurie? These names and everything. You wanted me to keep you out of it. The less you know, the better. Now give us what you got. OK. Got the names of the five blokes here. There's only one that fits the bill. His name's Alan Gale. Name ring a bell to you? No. Still work for the railways? Yeah. Same workshop? No. He's transferred to the western suburbs. I'm sure you could find him if you get on the phone. Thanks, Mick. I owe you a beer. Why don't we have that beer now, Laurie? You can tell me what's been going on. I'll call you. Railway carpenter name of Alan Gale. Does he work here? Yeah, but uh, he injured himself on the job. He's been off for a couple of days. You have an address for him? Uh, go. Where would I find this place? Oh, just down the main street over the level crossing. Right, mate. Appreciate your help. Won't ask you what he's done because I'm sure you won't tell me. No, nah, mate, no, not mother. He just might be able to help us with a few inquiries, that's all. feeling? Oh, marvellous. <laughs> it went well. You won't uh, take in anything I tell you now. Come and see me in a few days. Just take your time for now. Thanks. Jane, your ride's here. He said he'll just wait outside until you're ready. My ride? Mm. It's not bad either. How are you? What are you doing here? Oh, it's a bad time to get a cab. They're changing shifts. I can try for one if you'd rather. No, it's okay. Glad to see you, actually. I thought you were going to go and do something stupid. Oh. I worked out why you showed me the storeroom. So someone else knew the real story in case something goes wrong. And assuming you haven't found the second guy yet. You haven't, have you? You shouldn't even be worrying about this now, right? What happened? I saw him. And? He's got a wife and a little boy. So what are you going to do? Laurie, if you, if you kill him, it's not going to change the way you feel. I hear you, Jane. All right, I hear you. Don't worry about it now. Can you get 
get some rest and sleep, all right? Any operations, shock to the system? Yes, Doctor. <laughs> no, I am feeling a bit whacked. Thanks. So, see you tomorrow? 9 a.m., your office, don't be late. Am I that predictable? I like it. You take care of yourself, Jane. I don't care what they say about you. I reckon you're all right. Yes, Emma. Um, no, no, yeah, no, I, I, I know where it is. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll see you there. Bye. We right to go through? I think you'd safely say the shit's hit the fan. You knew about this place, did you? told me he was investigating a series of rapes. Perfectly normal activity for an ex-cop. One of which affected him personally. I'm sorry to interrupt. Why don't I know about this? He told me in confidence, Emma. I don't believe this. He thought he was under the two rapists that had been attacking women at railway stations. One of them was Eric Upton. You knew this and you didn't report it. I tried to call you. I got your voicemail. Leave a message? OK, so here it is, the link with Upton. Laurie didn't kill Upton. Oh, what? You're judge and jury now, are you? Jane, um, were you planning on having this discussion with me at any point? Have you considered, for a moment, that Laurie Downs might be the rapist? You yep. and I need to talk. You're joking. I can't say as it comes as a big surprise. Oh, thanks. Well, now Laurie's on the missing list. He didn't report for bail, did he? You and I really need to talk.
gives it. Not much of a copper, are you? Didn't want you back, eh? Like your mate Upton. Stupid bastard should have stayed in jail, eh? You took him out in case you told on you, eh? So, mate, why are you following me? You're gone. I'm not the only one who knows who you are or what you did. Huh? Drive. Where are you gonna go? Drive! Yes, Ruth. Is Detective Murray on the phone? Put him through. Brett? This is he decided to save us all some trouble. He wouldn't have killed himself. Yeah, good reason. Couldn't live with what he did to Upton for a start. Secondly, he's pushing 50, gone straight from jail to a nursing home. What's the point of that? I would have done it too if I was in He didn't kill himself. Put your professional opinion in writing and send it to me. Yep. No, I'll be through here fairly shortly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's, uh, what's today's special? <laughs> nah, I'm sick of fish. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Alright, mate, I'll meet you there. Too many of them around. Hey, if you don't want him, I'll have him. <laughs> hey, Topper? No thanks. Go on. On the house. Hmm? Your dad was running his own investigation. I think it's what got him killed. You don't think he killed himself? He wouldn't have done it to you or Joel. But Detective Murray said Detective he... Murray is wrong. Who would want to kill Dad? Your father's car was found outside Gemwood. Do you know of any reason why he might be out there? No. Never heard of the place. And he was always such a proud man. That's right, he'd keep it all to himself. He was feeling enormous grief, but he couldn't express it. Had the potential to cause him real problems, and in his last few months as a cop, I think it did. I always knew there had to be something. I never thought it might be another woman. I never would have guessed it all. You really got to care about him in the end, didn't you? 
Yeah, I did. At least he's free now. Free from all the torment. Dad, wherever you are now, I love you. Yeah, hi. Could you tell me the nearest uh, railway station to Jamwood, please? Yep. Okay, thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Jane Halifax. How can I help you? Did anyone come here lately asking about members of railway staff? He was a detective about four or five days ago. Was he asking about a particular name? I'm a police psychiatrist. You can call and confirm if you like. No, I trust you. It's just that uh, I wasn't actually in the office at the time and I didn't quite get the name my boss told him. Right, well, could I speak to your boss? He's actually away for the week, a fishing trip. Hey, but I'm sure if you can get in contact with that detective, I mean, I'm sure he can tell you the name. No, I'm afraid that's not possible. Well, he didn't take a mobile with him, so... He just said if anything happens here, it's somebody else's turn to fix it. Um, look, well, you've got my card. Could you get him to call me as soon as he gets back? Sure, no problem. Thanks. Eight mil bolts. How many do you need? A couple of boxes will do. Who's your girlfriend? Uh, she's looking for the boss. <laughs> Charlie. Mm. I don't think he can get it up anymore, eh? Nah, uh, she's some sort of shrink. Works for the cops. Mm. So when are we going to get the bolts? Yeah, I'll phone him in now for you. I'm sorry about the lifts. They don't work on a Saturday. Neither does anyone else by the look of the place. Well, I don't mind, actually. It gives me a chance to catch up on my paperwork. Without the inconvenience of patience. Oh, yeah, you're a terrible inconvenience, Jane. Well, the results are good. As you can see, all beautifully clear. I'd like you to come and see me again in a couple of months' time, and then it is a pap smear every year, miss. No excuses. Is this likely to affect my chances of having children? I won't lie. The chances will be considerably lower, given your age and the operation. If you do conceive, you may need a stitch to reduce the risk of miscarriage. Well, I'm not in any danger of conception in the near future, so...
Any doubts or any queries any time, please call me. Thanks. If you can find your way out. Yeah. Bye-bye. you an apology. A little late for that, isn't it? Laurie Downs didn't kill himself. Forensics found evidence that didn't belong to him, so there must have been somebody else in the car. You better get that same too. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting for the doctor. Well, I'll wait with you. There's no need. No, no, I'd like to give you a lift home, make sure you get there safely. It's the least I can do. Thanks. Just try not to get any blood on the car seats. 
Let's go here. 